The Royal Society of Chemistry has become the latest unlikely entity to try and curtail free speech. Its digital discovery journal has published a 37-page article entitled Academic Free Speech or Right-Wing Grievance. Authored by Professor John Herbert, it argues that free speech should not mean freedom from consequences and discusses how that should apply to figures such as the feminist academic Kathleen Stock. Dr John Armstrong, a reader in financial mathematics at King's College London, has been writing about this and he joins me now. Welcome to the show. So, freedom of speech shouldn't have freedom from consequences. It sounds a bit mafia, that. You know, you, you can say what you want, but there may be consequences, you know. Like, it, that's what they're arguing, isn't it, in this article? Yeah, I mean, I know it from Idi Amin, because he... <laughs> he said... Uh, well, he's, people attribute to him saying that you do have free speech, but I can't guarantee freedom after speech. OK. <laughs> And you know, I find it astonishing that people will be, um, you know, an academic journalist publishing something like that, because it, it, it is menacing. And I think it is almost deliberately menacing, in a sense, because the paper, obviously, is not saying people should be imprisoned yes. to say it for the wrong thing, but it, it does seem to be supporting harassment for wrong thing. Yes. So it talks about the case of Kathleen Stock, and it does acknowledge that... Um, it could be described as harassment would occur to her. And the paper says it doesn't support violence or threats of violence, but it does seem to be saying that um, because of her, what they call, outspoken bigotry, that there was an argument that it was reasonable that, that she was treated as she was. And, it, you know, but to me, this is astonishing. Do they describe it in their article as outspoken bigotry? That, that's, that, that's their phrase, yes. And the, but they, they don't... They don't justify the use of the phrase Quite. outspoken bigotry. So they have 37 pages in which to quote from Kathleen Stock. Yes. They've got, I think, 717 references. One of them is from Kathleen Stock. But they can't find anything to justify the statement that I mean, that's, that's spoken bigotry. That's very interesting because, as you know, the definition of bigotry is one who is completely intolerant of any alternative opinion. So surely that's a label that would be better applied to themselves. Yeah. I, th I think you could make a case for that, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, just, it just seems like mudslinging, uh, to be honest. But also, they're talking about whether this is free speech or right-wing grievances. And yet, the overwhelming majority of feminists who have made the case, a similar case to Kathleen Stock, are coming from the left. Mm. So this is an incoherent position anyway, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the piece just uh, doesn't... As an academic piece, you know, it, it's published in a journal, it should be taken seriously as a piece of academic writing. And it doesn't justify its main claims. It doesn't justify the claim that Kathleen Stock is a bigot. It doesn't justify the claim that this is a right-wing viewpoint. Um, so under any normal circumstances, I think a paper like this, you ask it to... Very, well, I think you'd reject it flat out, frankly. But, well, in know, a peer review system, surely. It yeah. Would be, yeah. But at the very least, you'd say, well, no, actually, you need to clarify this paper. You can't... You know, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequences. You can't say that in an academic journal. You need to be more precise. What consequences are acceptable? What consequences aren't acceptable? Quite. You expect a, a mature discussion, and the standard of this is just atrocious. But, but a lot of the cases of this kind are relating to the notion that some people might feel offended by the opinions that Kathleen Stock uh, has expressed. Uh, and you're saying the Royal, the Royal Society of Chemistry has issued some guidelines on offence, haven't they, on offensive speech? Yes, so this is, this is why the chemistry community is now talking about free speech, because that may seem odd that they're talking about it, but it's wrong that they should be talking about it. And the reason for this is that the Royal Society of Chemistry now says that in all of their journals, um, you have to... That they won't publish certain offensive content. Now, some of this is fairly reasonable. They won't publish um, explicit images. Now, I didn't know that the chemistry community was publishing a lot of pornography. No, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> but, I mean, there are various things you can do with a Bunsen burner, aren't there? <laughs> <laughs> um, but they... I think... Yeah, there clearly wasn't a need for this. They have a peer review system. Offensive content wasn't getting out there. I think the reason they wanted to do this is there's a detail in that policy which says that anything that might reasonably offend somebody on the basis of their religious or political beliefs, um, they won't publish. Right. And this is astonishing. But how, was that happening at all in the chemistry journals? Well, I would hope so, because if you look at the history of science... Yes. ..Galileo was literally a heretic. Yes. Yeah. So he would be punished for hate speech? Well, he, he, he certainly would be seen by the Pope at the time as being reasonably offensive. Yes. You know, because he offended 
he, he supported Copernicus's view that um, the Earth revolves around the Sun, and this uh, offended the identity of the then Pope, who thought that the Sun revolved around him. Yes. And <laughs> um, that now, apparently, the um, Royal Society of Chemistry would not see fit to publish. And not because it's about physics, because, you know, Galileo is a physicist, because they clearly publish things on identity politics. They're yes. happy not to just publish chemistry. They won't publish it because it's heresy. But isn't the whole point of science to bring us closer to the truth rather than to promote a particular ideology? Yeah, absolutely. The, the line that the Royal Society of Chemistry should be taking is that we will publish things if they offend people's religious or political beliefs, if they're scientifically accurate, and that should be their barometer. And if they publish something that offends your religious or political beliefs, you shouldn't be trying to silence them. You should be questioning your religious or political beliefs. And this is the whole point of science, that we should be open to being wrong, and we should be in a position where we constantly question our position. And so I, I feel this statement just goes against the fundamental values of science. Because the idea that, that there are two sexes, uh, it may be offensive to a lot of people who, who wish that weren't the case, but it is the case, and that has to be the starting point. Absolutely, and I think we all know that realistically, what is a chemistry journal likely to publish that is likely to offend some sensibilities? And it's clearly saying that there are two sexes, male and female. And the roles, by publishing this particular article, I think they're showing their position on that. They're saying that this is a reasonable article, that's why they're publishing it. And so they're saying that you can reasonably be offended if somebody disagrees with your views on sex and gender. And so I think it's very clear what's being targeted there. OK, well, uh, I think this is an absolutely fascinating conversation. And it is surprising that it's gone into uh, the realm of science. It's unbelievable. You would it? expect it to be in the realm of arts and humanities, where it's a bit more wishy-washy. But when it comes to science, <laughs> uh, and even mathematics, of course. So yeah. Is this likely to end any time soon? Well, one would hope so. I mean, the... What's happened, this has been going on in America for much longer, mm. and it hasn't ended there. So that makes you a bit pessimistic. But on the other hand, you can see that academics are increasingly talking about it. Um, so, so I hope it went. I hope that people push back. I think this particular case, there's an obvious opportunity for chemists mm. to say this, this is not acceptable. You cannot say that we won't publish things that offend religious beliefs. This is ridiculous for a science drill, and I really hope that chemists will stand up against that. Yes, but of course it's quite scary to do so when you see the treatment that people like Kathleen Stock get. Yeah. Well, yeah. and what this journal is clearly saying is that we are willing to abandon all of our normal scientific standards. We're going to publish a garbage paper. <laughs> mm. And that also suggests, and we might also be willing not to publish a high-quality paper, if you're the kind of person who thinks the wrong things. And I think there's that air of menace. Oh, well, thank you ever so much for joining me today. That is